Now let's jump on the bones of the forearm. And there's two bones, uh, and they're called ulna and radius. So basically, before we jump into the study in the bones, we have to get clear about orientation. And usually in anatomy, those bones are looked at as a parallel bones. And they are parallel only in case if the, if the body is standing in anatomical position. So basically, it is thumb pointing laterally or palms facing forward. Uh, of course, in a real life situation, when you as an artist creating the artwork or you painting or drawing or modeling the model, usually the model is not standing like this with the palms facing you. It is very unnatural position. But in this position, the bones, the radius and ulna, they are parallel. And it's easy to, to understand the orientation. So we have two bones, ulna and radius. So the radius is on the thumb side or the lateral side, and the ulna is on the medial side or the ulnar side. So let's look closer on the specimen. So in this case, it is the left arm seen from the front and from the back. So we see the thumb and it's the radial side. And we see the pinky finger and it's the ulnar side. And if you look from the back, it's the same thing. If you look at the if you look at the pinky, the little finger, it is the ulnar side. As we see, the ulna goes from the little finger from the pinky to the alacrinum, we already know, which is the elbow. And we have the thumb side, and it goes besides it and under the ulna if we look from the from the back side. But if we look from the front side, the, in the both ends, in the distal and the proximal end, they are parallel. In the first moment, when you look at them, they seem a different size. But in actual, in the real life, the, bo the both of the forearm bones, ulna and, and, and the radius, they are the same size, but they are shifted. So basically, similar like we see in a, in a lower limb, the tibia and fibula, are the same size, but they are also shifted. So the both uh, upper and lower limb, they have the same feature. And the same thing is in an animal. In animals, usually the shift makes this little uh, cushioning. When animal is running, it cushions the, the, the stress on the, on the joints. So basically, they, if you look at the palm, and you look at the hand, the radius part is connected to the hand. But if you look on the ulna, ulna has no articulation with the bones of the hand. But in the proximal side, the situation is a little bit different. Both of the bones are articulated with the humerus. So here you have this ball-shaped part and the condyle, spool-shaped condyle. And this spool-shaped condyle articulates with the ulna, and this ball articulates with the radius. And the other side, it is opposite. The radius has wide end, and the ulna has cylindric and thin end. And if you look from the back side, the arm is anatomical position, so thumb is pointing outside laterally. Radius is kind of hiding behind the ulna. So we have the elbow joint, which is ulna, and the radius is somehow hiding behind, but it's only if you look from the back. And we see the medial epicondyle, and we see the lateral epicondyle as well. So let's start with the ulna. So on a distal end, the ulna has its uh, like round shaped head called head of the ulna. That's uh, fairly visible when you look at the wrist and imagine there is this uh, wrist watch and just next to it there is this kind of like a bone. Another way to find it is uh, it, you, you can follow the little finger. So you follow it and then you just find it. You can actually, if you try, you can find it. In the other end of the ulna there is so this uh, olecranon, also known as the elbow. And if you make the line between those two uh, bony landmarks, it doesn't matter either you're in anatomical position or if you turn your forearm, you can always make some straight or curved line between those two bony landmarks. 
So if you connect them, you get body of ulna. Why it is so important to know the body of ulna? And the reason why, because it is borderline between the flexor group, flexor muscle group, that's the group which flex the hand, and the extensor group, which extends the hand. Now it's time to talk about pronation and supination. Remember we talked about uh, the anatomical position. So basically the anatomical position, it is like supinated arm. So as you remember, the thumb is pointing laterally, the palm is facing forward, or if the palm is bent, then it's, it's facing, uh, facing to the sky. And the both bones, the radius and the ulna, they are parallel. And the supination is when your, your thumb is facing towards your body uh, and uh, the palm is facing back. And the easy way to remember supination, the supination is like a carrying the soup. And the pronation is like a basketball pro. So what happens mechanically in the pronation and supination uh, movement? So basically, uh, there is like a there is a two joints in the elbow, and there is only one real joint in the hand side. We remember there is this uh, ulna joint, which is like a hinge joint, and it doesn't move during the pronation and supination. And then besides, there's a small ball, which belongs to the humerus, and in front of it, there's a cylinder, the cylinder of the, of the radius. And, and there's rotation happens. So basically, you have laterally pointing thumb away from the, away from the body. And then you have, and then you move your thumb up in opposite side and it points to the body. So basically what happens, re remember this head of the ulna? Head of the ulna doesn't change, it stays on the place. So it's more like an axis. The whole ulna is like an axis and uh, pronation happens around that axis. So basically the bones are crossing. In this side, the rotation happens and this side, the, the radial side crosses the, the ulna. And here you can see it better. So you have this ball, you have cylinder, the rotation happens and it crosses. When you supinate, it goes back and become parallel. So there is like a two joints. There is a hinge joint and then there is this rotation joint. In this photograph you can see. So the thumb is pointing laterally and when you pronate, the thumb is pointing towards the body. Radius and ulna are parallel. And then and during the supination, in the, in the hand side, they, the radius switches with the ulna. But if you look on the humerus side, so there is no change. The radius is outside and the ulna is inside. And, and during, the, during the pronation, it's the same. So you have the same, you have ulna in inside, and then you have radius and outside, similar like in, in this, this side, you have ulna inside and radius outside. But if you, look, if you look on the hand, here you have radius, you have ulna, but here they switch. And now it's time to talk about the bones of the hand. So first bones are the carpal bones, basically, they are the bones of the wrist. So when you bend your wrist, those carpal bones, those eight small bones here, they are the ones which create this arch here. Here you have the radius, and here you have those eight carpal bones. And why we can make this movement 40 degrees, but on the opposite side, we can make maybe one, two, or three degrees. And it happens because be between the ulna and the carpal bones, there is a gap. Remember that the ulna doesn't articulate with the, with the hand. There is a gap. So there's a little tiny ligament which connects, but there is no real, that, but, but there is no real uh, uh, articulation. 
And therefore, there is a gap here which allows to make this lateral ulnar deviation. So the next bones are metacarpal bones. Those are the invisible phalanges. So basically, that's this part. So you have wrist, and then you have these invisible phalanges. There is a five metacarpal bones. And the, the most visible part of the metacarpal bones are the knuckles. So you see the phalanges begin later. So you, you have knuckles here, but phalanges continue later. So you have knuckles, you have metacarpal bone articulation with the phalanges, but the actual fingers begin very much later. So there is a, some delay. So you can see the phalanges all the way from the joint. This green one, those are the real joints of the phalanges, but the actual separation happens much later. And finally, phalanges. So there is a proximal phalanges, there is a medial phalanges, and note that the thumb is missing medial phalanx, so there is only two phalanges. So every finger has three, but thumb has only two, because it's missing the medial phalanx, and the distal phalanges.